been building in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Um, I'm building out a rule system for Shadow the Demon Lord, and I'm starting with uh, character sheets. And I'm using a tool set um, that's not giving it enough credit, but it's called Sandbox. And a gentleman by the name of Sarah Grass, and his channel is Roll NL, and I'll put links in the video below. But he created this module where basically you can create your own rule set within Foundry VTT without doing any coding. So I'll just show you kind of what I've done so far. I'm pretty excited about it. It's really powerful. So I'm in Foundry VTT right now. I am going to open, actually, I'll delete this one and I'm going to start a new character. So characters are called actors. So I'm going to quickly, let's just call it Gwydion. Why not? And I'm going to click on the image and we'll load up an image real quick. I don't have anything handy. So we'll just do the butcher. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to change the default template to when I've been building this template PC and notice for a minute, these tabs, because it'll change later. I've got bio main inventory. I haven't built that out yet. And then I have other. So this is kind of has like background appearance, languages, religion. And the cool thing about this is you can expand these up and down. So if, if you decide you need more room, you can drag and move these all around, which is pretty cool. But the main tab, so I've built all this out using nothing but sandbox. So if you guys know Shadow the Demon Lord, level, ancestry, health, damage. Um, I, I put current health, healing rate. I'm still playing around with these. Um, paths, so novice, expert, master. Fortune's just a checkbox, so whether or not you have fortune. And some of the basic information, and here are the attributes. And these are rollable. So if I click on one of these and see it roll. And if I go into my chat box, you can see we've got a strength challenge roll and it's a success, 1d20 plus zero. So that's pretty cool, just to start with. All right. So um, let's see anything else in this character sheet. All right, so let's start by selecting an ancestry. So I've created all these folders and different items to populate the character sheet. So we'll start with ancestry. So here are all the basic ancestries I've built out from um, Shadow the Demon Lord. So let's just, I don't know, let's do a dwarf. So I'm going to drag and drop anywhere on the character sheet dwarf and watch how the attributes automatically update. And some of the other, doesn't matter where, I don't have to drag it right there, I can drag it anywhere. So you've got your dwarf there. And let's just open him, it's clickable. This is all the info I've just copied and pasted in. But the important thing... For a dwarf, starting attributes, strength 10, agility 9, intellect 10, and will 10. So you can see all these are in here. You can see this is red. It's been modified down by 1 to get to 9. So that's how I've addressed that. Perception, which is here, is your intellect score plus 1. So intellect plus 1. It did all that automatically. Defense is agility. So agility is 9. Defense is... Let's see, did it update that? Let's do one thing. Sometimes there's a little bit of a quirk that I have to like basically exit out of the character sheet and reopen it. Let's see if that does it. Yeah, so you can see the agility is nine and now it'll be good from now on, but you have to, a few things he's still working on, um, but this is amazing what he's done so far. So let's see, health equals your strength score plus four. So strength is 10 plus four is 14 for my health. And healing rate is your health to, um, multiplied by 0.25. So that's the healing rate over here. Size is one half. It updated that. Beautiful. Speed, eight. It's on here somewhere right there. Okay. So there's a couple other. You can see some of the traits that come with it. So you've seen that they're already built in here. We have dark sight, hated creature, and robust constitution. If I click on these, I get the information. And I'm still building some of these out to actually have roles associated with them. And then I'll show you how to level this up in a bit too. The way I've done this is if you click on this mod section, I won't show all this. He has videos showing this, but this is how you basically create um, how you want to modify your character sheet. So I've got a modifier for agility equals nine. So I'm adding to the attribute agility a minus one. So, and then there's a lot of other things you can do with this. Here's how I did perception, one plus intellect. So you, you get the picture. Okay, 
So I'm going to level him up for a minute. Now, obviously, I could just type in level one, but I created an item for a level. So I'm going to drag on anywhere here, populates level one. Then I'm going to go to my paths. Now, I've only started building out the paths. So let's see if I want to show, I think I've shown you the other, see if anything else populated on these tabs. Yep. So you can see he speaks common, he reads and speaks Dwarvish. So that populated automatically, which is cool. Now, again, notice there's nothing, there's not a magic tab on here, but once this power score gets to above zero, a new tab will show up here for magic. I just tied it into those tabs. So I'm going to drag on priest anywhere again. And so that's, there you go, novice path priest. And you can see a bunch of other things were populated down here too. Got magic, magical tradition, religious profession, and um, shared recovery. So if I click on priest, I go to info, scroll down and see. So here you go, increase attributes by two, health plus four, power plus one. You can see the health plus four, this was 14, that went up. The power went up to one, and now I've got this magic tab. So that's new. So now I have a tradition here waiting to populate. So this red exclamation point tells you there's something to do with character sheet, that you have to make some decisions. So let's click on that. Okay, drag it over here. So increase two attributes by one, and that's what it had said. So this is automatic. So now I'm gonna show, um, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna select strength and will. So these should both go up by one. Excellent, they did. Now again, I'll have to close down the character sheet for a second and then reopen it to get the other derived attributes to update. So maybe I'll do that just real quick. Okay, so those should have updated. Yeah, I think health even updated. Let's click this again, so there's more to do here. So now it looks like I've got a choice of languages. So here you go, either read one language you can speak or add language to the list of languages you can speak and then also add one religious profession. So let's just pick um, read one language or add a language list you can speak. We'll just say Elvish. Okay, so let's go here for a second just to see. So there you go, we got Elvish down there. Awesome. All right, still got more to do. So this is saying I need to select a tradition or a religion. And that, it, it explains it if you look in the detail um, of the uh, character sheet builder in Shadow of the Demon Lord, but I have to pick one of my religions, which gives me further choices because I'll get to select a uh, tradition associated with my religion. So if you, if you open Shadow of the Demon Lord, every one of these religions only has three or four choices of traditions. So let's just select Cult of the New, New God, click OK. And there you go. You can see my religion is Cult of the New God. And I have some of the background on that. But what's cool about that, now that I've tied in Cult of the New God, now I've got another choice, which is my traditions or magical traditions. And the way I did that is in my modifiers, I again said choose tradition select one, that's why it's only showing one, and here are my list, and again, this is from the rule book of what choices you have for traditions. So if I click, say life, okay. Now if I go to magic, I've got my life tradition. I'm just starting to build out the magic tab. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's see. The other thing that's cool, like shared recovery, this is automated. So this is, you can use an action to heal damage to your healing rate. So let's just for a second, and I'm still playing with this, but let's just say I've got six points of damage. Okay, so I've got 19 hit health, six damage, 13 healing rate. So if I click on shared recovery, which shows I have one use down here, if I click on this, watch this change. Okay, so I've got two damage now and I've got current health of 17, and now you can reset this if you want. Um, let's just say you, you complete a rest, hit the X, and it refreshes it. Pretty slick stuff, really cool. Now, if you wanna level up, so level two priest gives you a health plus four. I don't think I've, I haven't done all of these yet, but just to show you 
one more time how easy it is to level. So if I drag on the level, and it should give me health plus four. And again, you only need to do this once um, after you've updated. So it, it looks like a pain, but there you go. That went from 19 to 23. So there's so much power to do with this. Um, you know, there's so many options you can you can do. You can create roll tables. Um, in fact, I think I've done one. I might show you really quickly. And I haven't messed with this much, but this is your dwarf hatred or hated creature. creature. I should have said, yeah, hated creature. So if you roll on this, you can decide whether or not it goes in chat, but you can basically, I've got all the uh, different types of creatures. Click on roll. And it selected ogres. This is a dice mod add-on that it shows me what I selected. And it'll show in chat, chat. My hated creature is an ogre. So I can, you know, put that in my notes or find that on my character sheet. Maybe I'd put it down here. Notes. Hated creature equals ogre. So, and then you can type in. I just put in text fields for this for now. But anyway, really cool stuff. A um, lot left to do, but I just wanted to show you the power of this tabletop system. I still love Fantasy Grounds for those that know me. Um, I won't leave that, but for something like Shadow of the Demon Lord that you can um, kind of create, I feel like a little bit easier. I might use a system like this to um, to create rule, a rule, rule sets like that. So uh, anyway, that's it for tonight. Just wanted to, to show you what I was working on. This has been a lot of fun and I encourage you to play around with it. If you're looking for something something new and, and want to create your own system and are having a hard time in, in any other programs, um, Boundary B B BTT is especially with Sandbox, thanks Saragross, is really awesome. So thanks everyone. Talk to you soon.